these are the dice we roll in what we do. Um, the thing is, I'm now, because I'm 51, I'm now at an age where I'm seeing some of the original decisions come back. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Drugs and Stuff with Dave Crossland. I'm Scott McNally. We have a special episode for you today. Some crazy <laughs> shit went down, and um, it's not for me to tell you, it's for Dave. So what's up, man? Uh, it's only going to be a 10-minute episode of that. Uh, so basically, uh, Monday night at half past six, I started having a heart attack. Um, I didn't actually know what it was initially, but it was very tight chest pain. It's very localized, very small area of pain here. Radiating pain down the left-hand side of my jaw, which almost felt like a tooth infection pain. It was sort of like really? deep in the bone. It's like deep in the bone. And then my left elbow was extremely painful as well. What kind of, when you say um, pain, like what are we talking? What kind of pain is it? So this was like an intense pressure, but in a very small, like, um, sort of that size area in my chest. Okay. Okay. Um, now I've had these feelings before, not as acute as this, but I had this before much, much milder, only lasted a few minutes and then went away. They repeatedly throughout the day and got longer and longer and longer. Last time it happened, it lasted for over an hour. Again, it wasn't acute. It was just uncomfortable then. Uh, I did go to a &E at that point and I was told that I hadn't had a heart attack. Okay. So when this initially first started, I'm like, oh, this will just ease. Because I get all sorts of weird chest pains from my heart. My heart doesn't work properly. And as a result, uh, very often it will send weird and shitty fucking pains and signals. And you, you just get a bit, you know, you start to get to ignore them. Mm. And you get used to what's normal. Uh, but this was not going away and it was getting more intense. Uh, so I went and sat in one of the IV chairs in the clinic thinking I'll just recline, try and breathe it out. That wasn't helping. So I went across home and I just said to her, Alice, I'm going to bed. And she's like, do you want to ring an ambulance? I went, no, just let me go to bed. So I went upstairs. She came up after me and she said, my hands had gone white and my face was going blue. Shit. So she rang an ambulance. Um, at this point, I'm starting to get a little bit oblivious to what's going on around me because the pain's got really intense. And, you know, it's, it's probably a weird simile, but you know when you train shoulders and you get that pain in your shoulder, and it doesn't matter what you do, you can't get rid of the pain in your shoulders. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And you end up waving your arms in the air and fucking <laughs> leaning against shit and all sorts, anything to try and get that pain out. Well, that's how I was on the bed, but with this chest and head and elbow pain. <clears throat> anyway, paramedics came. Uh, they give me some morphine. They ran some checks. They, they were pretty suspect it was a heart attack. They ran, I think they did five ECGs. Uh, and I think I had about 25, 30 milligrams of morphine. Wasn't touching it at all. They gave me 300 milligrams of aspirin, I believe, as well. Yeah. And then they put me in the ambulance and they blue-lighted me to the nearest cardiac unit, which is the neighbouring town, Halifax. Okay. I went in there, got put in another... Um, ECG. Now they'd run leads, which is the main cardiac unit. So they'd run leads and leads had refused to have me at this point. So I've gone into Halifax. Halifax have put me on their air ECG. I've had more morphine at this point. The pain's gone down a little bit, but it's coming in waves now. So it's going up, staying intense for 10, 15 minutes, coming back down. Yeah. Um, and they then rang leads. As soon as they were looked at my ECG, they rang leads. Leads said yes. And I was blue lighted then to leads. I literally was wheeled through the door at Leeds, straight into surgery. Uh, they did an angiogram, confirmed that I had a blockage in one of the three arteries feeding my heart. They And, and immediately they put a stent. In fact, I've still got the, you, I don't know if you're able to see it, there's a very small hole in my wrist there. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Where they went, went through up into my heart to put the stent in. Oof. Um, and they said, my other two arteries are good but this one was block solid. Hmm. So basically my heart was starved of um, blood for about four hours. Oh, um, the, the funny thing was, one of the guys said to me, he said, how do you feel? I went, I feel all right. Um, I mean, obviously I was in pain, but other than that, I feel all right. And he's like, well, you fucking shouldn't do. 
So he was quite gobsmacked that I was still mobile. Yeah, okay. Um, Because they were trying to transfer me from the trolley to the operating theatre table, and I just got up, stepped across, and sat back down again. (laughs) (laughs) I wish they weren't too happy with me for. Hey, I'd rather you did it yourself versus me have to carry you, Dave. Let's be honest now. I just said, look, at my size, when you try and do a board transfer, it always goes fucking wrong. It's all right fast. <laughs> I'll just fucking get up and move. Fuck off. <laughs> so I think I'd ended up having about 35, 40 milligrams of morphine. That, the, but the thing is, as soon as the balloon went in to enlarge the artery to put the stent in, yeah, all the pain stopped, everything, boom. And I felt you, brand new. You're kidding me. No, oh. I, just, I literally felt brand new. It was like, fuck, it's like someone just turned a switch. So you're so, awake for this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah, yeah. Sleep, but, yeah. So yeah. they took me up onto the ward, uh, um, put on a, a, a monitor, blood pressure every two hours, constant monitoring. Um, doctors in and out all fucking night long. So I got absolutely fuck all sleep. And unfortunately, the poor old dear next to me was a, a woman who had dementia. So she spent about three, four hours praying to God. Okay. Rather, rather loudly. I felt... Sorry for her, but by the time it got to the four hours, I was actually starting to pray myself that God would take her. Because <laughs> um, if I need some fucking sleep. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, long and short of it was, they came to see me the next day and explained what had gone on, which I already knew anyway. They ran a series of tests because they have to put contrast in to do the angiogram. They wanted to check my kidney function. And my kidney function came back at the highest it's ever been. You're kidding me. Huh. No, my EGFR was 32, okay. which technically takes me out of stage four and puts me in stage three B. You're kidding me. So, no. Wow. Um, and my creatinine was under 200 for the first time since I was diagnosed. Wow. So that was Bertie bonus. And then they're like, right, we're going to transfer you back to Halifax for your recovery. I was like, yeah. okay, fine. So what do I need? He said, well, you're going to need an echo so we can see the damage. And then obviously we'll set a management plan in place based off that. I went, fine. Well, I'm going home tomorrow because I got this conference to lecture at today. Um, so it's like, look, I'm Which going guys, to Dave, when, before we started recording, Dave's like, oh, I'm kind of tired. I've been lecturing at this lecture thing at this all day long. Guys, Dave just had a heart attack. I do have to say, man, I hope that you can use this as like, I hope you can take it a little easier because I know that you you are an extreme person. The reason I know, the reason I understand how extreme you are is because I can relate to you. I totally, I get it. I see in you things that I see in myself. And I do have to say, we want to keep you around here for as long as we can. And if that means like not being quite as stressed, I think that that would be to the, the your thing benefit. Is, Right, so the, the the truth of it is, though, that this actual heart attack, this occurrence, had nothing to do with work, had nothing to do with stress, had nothing to do with tiredness. It was just unfortunate that I had a, black, a plaque build up in this artery that I wasn't aware of, and it got blocked. Mm-hmm. That's not to do with anything I've done in the sense of work. You know, I set the scene for this 10 years ago. Okay. Um, and and I, I truly believe that this is down to my HDL being low for extended period of time because mm. they tested my cholesterol in the hospital and my total cholesterol is 3.6. Now, the upper limit in the UK is 5. My LDL is less than 3. The upper limit for LDL is 4. Okay. So my cholesterol's good from an LDL point of view and has been throughout my usage. It's my shitty HDL that's led to this crap. Yeah. Um, but this, you know, I, I did this, nobody else. Um, it, but it wasn't work or stress related. This, this could have happened at any time and potentially eight months ago did happen to a smaller level, hmm. but went untracked. Now it turns out that what the hospital I went to at that point should have done, they should have done an angiogram. Okay. And they did, they didn't. Okay. So all my cardiology, re- uh, care has been moved under this senior cardiologist at the hospital I was at yesterday. Okay. So he's, because when I, because he came to see me on, they did the echo in the morning, he came to see me and he went through everything and he's like, right, oh, you've taken your, because I'd taken all my monitors off. I said, yeah, I can't fucking sleep with them on. I said, and you want to fuck my heart, lose my sleep. Uh, well, we we need to know what this is. I said, well, my pulse rate is 77, my blood pressure is 132 over 82. 
I said, what else do you need to know? He said, well, what's your INR? I said, 2.7. He says, well, what's your EGFR? I said, 32. <laughs> it's like, oh, right. He said, well, we're going to keep you until Saturday. I said, you're not. I'm going home today. <laughs> and he looked at me and I went, look, I'm not being funny. I know you have a duty of care. I said, I, I do genuinely appreciate that. And I don't want to put you in an awkward position. I said, but I'm too fucking busy to be sat here doing nothing. I said, and I'm not stupid enough to push myself. If I felt ill yeah. or unwell in any way, I would be staying in this fucking bed. Trust me. Yeah. I said, but I feel perfectly normal. Okay. I said, I don't have any issues. I said, I'm walking around the ward. I'm walking to the toilets. I've got no restriction in my breathing. I said, my performance cardiovascularly was much, much worse when I was first diagnosed with heart failure. Okay. I said, so I'm not, I'm not concerned where I am. He said, well, there's a lot of damage to your heart. I said, yeah, but there's always been a lot of damage to my heart. Mm. So anyway, we, we had a deal. Um, so basically I've got to go for bloods on Friday. Oh shit. Yeah. I need to sort that. Um, Can you um, just go for bloods there? Go for bloods at home. I know I have to go to the hospital. Uh, So it's on their system. Um, So I've got to go to Bloods Friday and I've got to get my weight down to 20 stone by March. So you already lost like 50, 60 pounds, right? Yeah. 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 Could that have had any kind of cause with this? Like, like, you know, you start like more free radicals and things are, you know, all this fat's getting, I don't know, liberated. As as the fact that I'm more active, I'm fitter, I'm healthier, and I've lost so much weight, has that impacted the plaque build up in my arterials and caused some of it to come loose? Possibly. I don't, I, I don't know. Huh. It's, it's, it's beyond my knowledge, is that? But, I mean, I got released Wednesday afternoon. Um, I'm, I'm on a, a reasonable amount of meds, so aspirin for a month and then another drug for 12 months so they don't reject the stent that they've put in. Okay. But, but other than that, I drove to Manchester this morning, did a lecture today, did a conference today in Manchester, drove back. I've just done the Pillars lesson tonight, and then I'll catch up because I'm behind on Bloods, so I'll catch up on Bloods tomorrow and Saturday. But uh, I feel okay, but a few people know, and I'm already starting to get messages here and there from people, so I thought, you know what? Rather than there be all sorts of rumours, let's just say it as it is. Yes, I had a heart attack. It was an arterial blockage. There, there may be damage to my heart off the back of it, but my heart's already badly damaged anyway, so it's nothing new on that front. Okay. But I am in myself fine. I feel good. And I, when I started my diet, I was 27 stone, and I weighed in this morning at 22 stone 10. Nice. So you're, you're, and you're working to 20 by March is the goal. Initially. The initial 20. Because uh, I'm well aware of I've got three days in Prague next week. I've then got a fortnight in Jamaica. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be sensible, but obviously I'm not going to be as adherent as I currently am. So we can pretty much write the month of December off from a diet point of view. So, <laughs> so what's t- what's 20 stone? What is that weigh? In 20 pounds? stone, 280 pounds. 280 pounds. Okay. Yeah, I could see you at 280. That'd be good. Mm-hmm. That'd be good. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I'll be lean, lean at 280, but I think no. I will look, in clothes, I think I'll look quite respectable. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Uh, I mean, I'm going to have a bit of loose skin probably, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Well, you might then, have to what, hang up the posing trunks, Dave. It might not. You might not be able to compete again. Well, what I, what I want to do is get to 20, maintain it for a month, six weeks, yeah, and then possibly push again then after that. But I'm, I, I just want to have a little bit of a stabilization before I push again. Okay. So... Um, I got another question for you because for anybody who is newer to our show, they may not know that you do have kidney issues, which you mentioned. Could those kid? So for what I understand, when the kidneys get weak, the heart is what ends up having issues. Can you talk a little on that? Could this, is there a relationship here between heart issues I've and never, kidney? I, my heart issue, my kidney issues are size and anabolic induced. My heart issues are size and anabolic induced. The the biggest issue with my heart was I was a 400-pound man that was actually cardiovascularly okay. Um, but then I stopped training and I didn't do any exercise and I was still a 400-pound man. And and what where I fucked up post the projects was I didn't – I should have been very active in bringing my weight down straight away. Okay. I didn't. 
I, I rejected all that because I focused on work. I was focusing on clients. I was focusing on family. Yeah. So I, I didn't, I, I fell out of training. I fell out of the lifestyle. And it's taken a long time for me to get my head in a place to get back into it. Yeah. Um, it, well, it's taken five years, to be fair. Um, I've watched you try it, before, and it's. Yeah, you know, I, I, I failed. Tried- I, I mean, I want you to see good. At the same time, I have seen you try and then it not work out. And I'm glad to see that you have been able to be consistent with it. You know, it's, yeah, it's tough. Mean, I'll, and I'll, listen, to be fair, too, for anybody watching, because this is a bodybuilding and fitness related channel. You know, it's like when you do fall away from it, it's hard for anybody to get back to. Uh, it's it. And let this be an example, too. Like, once you get there, stay there. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying stay at 400 pounds, but, like, get in shape, stay in shape. It's a lot easier to stay there than to have to get it back again, you know? Yeah, I'd, I'd get – I'd drop two stone. I'd drop – so I'd drop, like, 30 pound, you yeah. know, 35 pound. And then I would have a series of events that made it difficult, be it work events or whatever it was. I'd break diet. I'd go off track. Uh, and, and I'd end up ballooning back up very, very quickly. Um, I mean, I hated every second of this diet. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. I can't stand diet in a fucking low with it. But do you like the results? But, not at this point, no, because the results aren't anything particularly. I mean, I look better than I did. But don't I you feel better? Stuff. Like not holding as much weight? Don't you like feel yeah, better in your day to day? Knees don't hurt yeah. as much and stuff? Knees never hurt anyway, so okay. it wasn't an issue. Okay. Um, yeah, I do. Um, but it's not, yeah, I, I do. Uh, there's no denying that. Uh, but visually I still got a lot to go. So obviously I'm not, and, and I think the, the way is I obviously look at physique from a bodybuilding aspect. So I don't look at it. Oh, you've lost a lot of weight, Dave. I look at it. Well, you've still got a lot of fat to get rid of your fat twat. Um, it's a great self-talk. I like that. Yeah. But I think, I think there's two things that I've done. I think there's two things I've done this time that were different. The first thing was I went to prep meals. Yeah. Uh, so there's no thought. I don't have to think about anything. I don't have to prepare anything. It's just I eat that meal and that meal and that meal and that's the job done. Yeah. And the second thing was that when I moved house, the new bedroom has a full-length mirror at the side of the bed. Uh, okay. So I'm reminded every morning and night what a mess I look. Um, huh. and that, that helped keep me motivated because I, I, I see myself and it's like, I don't like what I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's been a balance because I say I've in the past, that's not been enough to motivate change Yeah. because I don't really give a fuck what people think of me. So I'm past caring about all that. I've had that much abuse over the years <laughs> for what I've done. <laughs> I, I've got a bit fucking numb to it all now, <laughs> but I know, I know Shah was worried about my health. And, and so it was a combination of those three factors. The yeah. success of the dieting has been down to the prep meals. The inspiration to stay dieting has been the mirror and the fact that um, I want to, you know, I, I don't want to be a burden on Shah any more than I need to be. I can only imagine how she felt going through this. Like, oh, she's she, terrified. She's, yeah. she, keeps, she keeps poking me in the night to see if I'm still alive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and she's like, she's, because I've come home, I've come across the office to do the, the lesson. Yeah. Uh, and she's come across and sat with me because she doesn't, she's like, are you okay? I'm fine. Uh, and I did gen- am, you know, I, I, I don't just say this, I genuinely feel fine. Yeah. Uh, apparently I shouldn't. Apparently I'm not supposed to drive for a month. I'm not supposed to work for a month. I'm supposed to just fucking sit on my ass. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd get more stressed by doing nothing. Yeah than I would by not, by doing something. I, I need to be productive. I can't sit on my ass and do fuck all. And today was great. Today was an amazing day. Made some great networks. Uh, got some really interesting shit in the pipeline, particularly working with Eve Allen and Bloods UK, the new, the new pathology lab. So, yeah, yeah it's, been, it's been fucking, uh, today's been a fantastic day. Um, cool. And the other thing is I needed to test myself as well because I'm going to Prague on Sunday. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you so, want to kind of see where you're at before the trip. And by the I way, too, I asked you this off the air, but you've been cleared to do that, right? You've been cleared to go on your trip. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure that was clear for anybody who's listening. Uh, you, The time delay between having a stent and flight is two to five days. Okay. Okay. Um, and it will be seven days when I fly. 
Okay. I fly on the Monday, actually. We travel down to the airport on the Sunday, but I fly on the Monday. Okay, cool. Well, I hope you guys have a great uh, time, man. I hope you get a chance yeah. to relax there. You're probably not going to be doing... Are you doing check-ins and stuff still, or are you just well, taking the well, whole time of off? I am. Oh, I'm okay. a fuck. I'm doing check-ins. Yeah, of course you are. I would be, I've, too. I've wa- There's that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've warned them. I've warned them it's going to be a bit shitty, but yeah, yeah I'm doing check-ins. Um, <clears throat> but no, it, it's, you know, these are the dice we roll in what we do. Um, the thing is, I'm now, because I'm 51, I'm now at an age where I'm seeing some of the original decisions come back and impact me. And, and I think that's one thing that people sometimes don't consider. You can get shit from metabolic use 10 years down the line when you've left it, you're not using it anymore, and you've moved on to other things in life, and then all of a sudden it'll come up and fucking boot you up the arse. Yeah, I've heard others say I mean, that. I mean, this came from nowhere. Um, no symptoms, no... Saying that, I do saying that, for the last three, four weeks, I've felt like dog shit. Yeah. And I've, I've told you that. I've, I've just I noticed like it, too. Shit. I could tell. Yeah. Yeah, just I could tell. Just like like I said on text, I was like, you just you were more quiet. You didn't text. Like sometimes, if you like, I could tell. Like you were just more distant with texting and stuff. I was like, he's either I've really been, busy or he just doesn't feel good right now. I've been I've been really wry, uh, and and I've been very drama queeny in that when things have gone wrong, they've been absolute fucking disasters in my head. They're not. Oh, They're just things that go wrong. Yeah. But I've been going off oh, a fuck's sake. This is the end of the world. Sort of approach to it. Yeah. Um. I just thought it was because I'm hungry. I'm very oh, hungry. Oh, yeah. Hungry. Yeah, that could, yeah, I could see how you could get confused that then. Uh, but I think now having, feeling how I feel today, that no, there was, I think there was something already going on. I think there was a restricted blood flow already at that point, And that's what I was feeling. And that's why I was, I wouldn't say anxious, but, you know, sort of a bit that way. Yeah. Yeah. But it is what it is. Uh, but I do think that people have a right to know because obviously uh, Scott's already started to replace me with Steve. <laughs> um, that was Dave's so Steve, text. He was like, you're really quick to replace me. So Steve's going to have to grow a ginger beard and then claim it's red. Um, but other than that, I thought, well, you know, I'm not gone yet, you bastards. You stuck with me for a bit longer. <laughs> All right. So you're taking... You got you've got that next this next week off, and then yeah. we're going to record another show, and then you've yeah. got another week off. So I'm going to put out. I've got a couple episodes. Steve and I recorded two episodes that day, so we're going to put. Oh, did you know? Yeah, yeah. we're yeah. going to put one out, and then uh, we'll one with me and you, and then I'll be going to the Olympia. You'll be leaving, and then we'll put out the other one with Steve. Then, and then I get to hang can out I, with Steve in in Vegas. Can I ask a question? What's what is it? Dude. Is this your podcast or is this our podcast? I think this is your podcast. No, I think it's definitely equal. It's either ours, me and you, or it's you. Which is it? I think it's ours. I do. I think so it's why ours. Don't, right. So then how can you bring Steve on without even consulting me or asking if it's okay? Not that it's a problem, actually. Hi, Steve. Thank you very much for stepping in. But go on. Here's the deal. We had so many listener questions that were going to go unanswered. I wanted to make sure that we got back to those people and we keep the show going. You know, Steve was very happy to fill in. It was very nice of him, actually. I'm very grateful. It was. No, I'm, I I'm, appreciate it, Steve. I'm very grateful. And, and honestly, you know what I would say, Dave, at, when we started recording this show, I would say this was your show, literally. Like, this was your thing. And I, I do feel like that we've, it's become our show over time. And, and I appreciate that. I like the way it's growing. And I've had people, I just got off the phone with a client. And he told me, I've listened to drugs and stuff for a long time. And he was like, it used to just be like, you know, there was good inter- education and stuff. He's like, but now it's just entertaining. And it, and I still learn stuff with it. He's like, it's a, it's a good show now. Like, you can just turn it on and enjoy it. So that makes me happy to see what it's evolved into. I think it's evolved into a bit of entertainment as well, yeah. Um, yeah. And and I think people enjoy that. Anyway, you have to be nice to me now because I, I, I'm a cardiac patient. I don't have to do shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always nice to you, Dave, but the thing is, guys, Dave doesn't like when you're too nice to... <laughs> Dave doesn't like when you're too nice to... Yeah, why couldn't you have had a heart attack on the program? Do you realize how I many... Did, you I know realize? we did discuss this actually. You say that if I'm gonna die, I have to do it live on air. <laughs> Dave, yeah, you you could have. We could have gotten so many views if you would have had that heart attack just 
the next day or two later, two days I, later. I, well, well, I tell you what, I promise I'll have another one live on air. Thank you. Thank you. That's okay. It's the least you could do, you know, for our... <laughs> <laughs> right on that point you can all fuck off because i'm gonna bed <laughs> all right dave we appreciate you guys for another episode <laughs> of drug stuff oh and by the way even though you weren't there we plugged the hell out of eval so just know that too even Thank though you, you when steve and i recorded guys go to eval get your blood work done don't end up like dave look at things ahead of times <laughs> <laughs> and of course we appreciate you tuning in for this um and, uh, yeah, we'll see you very soon, guys, for another episode of Drugs and Stuff with Dave Crossland. I'm Scott McNally. See you soon. Peace. Bye.